Today across our great land, we observe Memorial Day to honor our war dead. Originally known as Decoration Day, May 30th was designated by General John Logan, the National Commander of the Grand Army of the Republic, GAR, to be set aside to decorate the graves of those who had died in the Civil War. On May 5th, 1868, when the day was dedicated, General Logan said, I quote, let no vandalism of avarice or neglect, no ravages of time, testify to the present or to the coming generations that we have forgotten, as a people, the cost of a free and undivided republic." End quote. On the first Declaration Day, May 30th, 1868, three years after the Civil War, General James Garfield made a speech at Arlington National Cemetery. 5,000 participants placed flowers on the graves of approximately 20,000 Union and Confederate soldiers that were buried there. This weekend, there were flags placed on close to 250,000 graves at Arlington National. In 1971, Congress passed the National Holiday Act, which established the last Monday in May as Memorial Day. On this Memorial Day, I request the things from all of you First of all, always remember the sacrifice of our veterans. And secondly, live each day to the fullest, enjoying the many freedoms they, that they fought and died for. If they thought that their sacrifice of the work was worth it, then so should we. I'd like to call upon uh, Reverend Jonathan Reardon, Holy Family Parish, for an invitation. My dear friends, we gather today to, in remembrance of our brothers and sisters who paid the ultimate sacrifice, giving their lives in defense for the freedom of our nation. We pray that the grace and peace of God be theirs, that they be purified of their own faults and be welcomed into the joy of life everlasting. And so let us bow our heads in prayer. O God, by whose mercy the faith will depart and find rest, look kindly upon our family and friends, members of our families, of our own services who offered their lives in defense of our nation. They departed this world in service of a greater good. Grant them eternal life in your kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Father. Would everyone please rise for the playing of our national anthem?
two people, clergy present in addition to Father Bearden and Father Randy Calvo who are involved in our program. I'd like to formally welcome Reverends Douglas and Margaret Belanger of the Valley Life Assembly of God. And I don't know if Mr. Jack Cooper was here. Um, Cooper represents the former First Congregational Church of Deerfield. And uh, we were going to have him say a prayer at Brookside, but uh, he, uh, because of the weather, uh, we won't be doing that. But Jack has joined us every year. Our select board is present. First of all, Chairperson Carolyn Ness. Henry Camosa. Very integral part of our program is the Hale Clap Post 3295 Veterans of Foreign Wars, and we salute them. And their commander, Ray Belial, is here. Ray Belial. And the We also have the Girl Scouts with us this afternoon, local Deerfield. As well as police, fire, and ambulance. Thank you very much. So and of course, our veterans. Once again, we're pleased to have with us a uh, gold star mother of Deerfield, um, Sergeant Gregory Belanger, was killed in action in Iraq in August 2003. His mother, Gold Star, uh, mother Kathleen Belanger, today is escorted by three young ladies from Deerfield Elementary School. Fourth grader, Ashley Taylor, fifth grade, Lucia Dillette, and sixth grader, Summer Sobieski. Kathy Belanger, our Gold Star mom. notice as the years go by, the glasses are getting bigger. <laughs> First off, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming today. This means a lot to me, and it also means a lot to the committee to show, and to show that you all care and you're giving us support for our veterans now and those that have passed on. Memorial Day is our history. It was formed during the Civil War when women and slaves went and placed flowers upon the deceased graves of the Confederates and the Union soldiers. It didn't matter what side they were on, these men and women were honoring the war dead. It was called Decoration Day. Then, Fast forward, it became a three-day federal holiday. This day is marked for a lot of you with family gatherings, going to the cemetery, putting flowers on your family's grave. Later on, a barbecue after coming to this. And then for some of you, you're going to be planning your vacation because even though we had 90 degree weather just a couple weeks ago, it's now considered the beginning of summer. Unfortunately, a lot of the people have lost sight of the true meaning of Memorial Day. You know, you go out there and people will say, Happy Memorial Day! It's not happy. Especially for me. You hear on the television, come on down. Belize Automotive will give you a $2,000 saving. It's become a Hallmark holiday, but it's, but it's not a holiday of, of cheer. It's a holiday of sadness for those 
that had lost a loved one during the war. We need to educate people that this is a solemn occasion and pay our respects and then go on and have our barbecues and plan our summer vacations. <coughs> and I've asked you in previous years to show your patriotism, hang your flags, decorate the graves of not only your loved ones, but that of someone that has served in the military. I had the honor on Thursday with John Sizz and a group of Deerfield students going up to Laurel Hill in the freezing rain. I looked like a drowned rat, but it was worth it. It was, it was so heartwarming to be able to share this time with the young youth, the future generation, being taught and shown that peace is not free and it should never be taken for granted. We go about our everyday lives, but you know, we have it so good. We have become a volunteer military. It used to be there was a draft. There used to be that patriotic drive within the young men and women to go and serve for their country because they loved it and they wanted to protect it. And they wanted to, it to be there for future generations. So for the men that are sitting in the audience that came home from the war, and I know that you share your deep memories and I know that you lost buddies, I thank you. After 9-11, we should have all been awoken to how our world has changed. The terrorist attacks still are happening just recently in Manchester, England. It's a scary time. It's not like when I was a little girl. But then when I started reflecting, I'm 65 now. That's my number, even though there's moments I don't feel like it. I have lived through the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the Gulf War, and the conflict in Afghanistan and Iraq. All that in just my 65 years. That's a lot. I want the future generations not to know the sadness that I have had, or my family, or my community. We have 24 signs within our community of men who paid the ultimate sacrifice. And we're here today to honor them also and say thank you. The other thing that I need to mention is on April 25th, the Greenfield Recorder wrote an article that the middle school students had no idea what 9-11 was. And I got thinking about it. Well, if it's not taught, they're not going to know our history. That is our history that makes us a great nation. That is a history that we need to have all the young children know that freedom is not free and that innocent lives can and were taken that day. Just a week ago on my iPad, which when I got it three years ago, I'm not very computer illiterate, and I thought, what are, were my children doing giving me this thing? Because it didn't come with instructions. It was one of those things I had to learn all by myself. But now I find I'm on it every day, and it's a valuable instrument. And what I found was a piece that was written on October 22, 2002, 15 years ago. It was written by a Sergeant Keith W. Mills of Pelham, South Carolina. And it was written about the day that he came to Iraq. It was the day that Greg was killed. And this is what he wrote. And I do not know this gentleman, but this is what he shared. I was with him that day 
not in his vehicle, but in the convoy. He was the driver of the rear escort vehicle. I still remember the boom as the blasts went off. We had no idea what had happened. We acted as we were taught and moved on with the mission. The NCOIC of the escort detachment broke procedure, sent us on, and went back to fend off enemy forces from the disabled vehicle's position until reaction forces could get there. This was my welcome to Iraq. When we hit the base, we did not celebrate. We made it to Balad with 100% of our personnel. We were informed of his death and were greatly saddened. We knew his sacrifice was for all of us. He made sure that we arrived safely. I remember his memorial in Iraq. I remember roll call. I remember how our te tears fell and they called Sergeant Belanger, Sergeant Belanger, Sergeant Gregory A. Belanger. He would not answer. His boots, his helmet, and his ID tags on the podium were his great sight. I owe my life to this brave soldier. I could never repay him or his family for what he has given to me. Instead, I want to thank you all for my life. I thank you for my four sons, all born after I returned from my wrath. I thank you for the safety of our great nation. I will always weep in my heart for all the fallen, but this one I knew, and I will weep for him for most of all. May God grant you all happiness and success all your days. May he also continue to improve Sergeant Belanger's mansion in heaven as he not only died for our safety, but lived for all of our freedoms. Thank you and God bless. will be uh, passed over as to the weather. Uh, we are eliminating that right now. Our memorial wreath will be placed outside after the program. Over 70 years ago, our next speaker was in the Pacific in World War II. I'd like to introduce Petty Officer Second Class, Faye Barwell, U.S. Navy. the flag pass by today. It fluttered in a breeze. A young Marine saluted it, and then he stood at ease. I looked at him in uniform. So young, so tall, so proud. With hair cut square and eyes alert, he'd stand out in any crowd. I wondered just how many men like him had fallen through the years, how many died on foreign soil, how many mothers' tears. <coughs> I, look, I looked at him in uniform. 
so young, so proud. How many pilots' planes shot down? How many died at sea? How many foxholes were soldiers' graves? No, freedom is not for free. I heard the sound of taps one night, but everything was still. I listened to the bugler play and felt a sudden chill. I, thought, I wondered just how many times that taps had meant amen when the flag had draped the coffin of a brother or a friend. I thought of all the children, the mothers and the wives, of fathers, sons, and husbands with interrupted lives. I thought about a graveyard at the bottom of the sea, of unmarked graves in Ireland. No, freedom is not free. Thank you. sequence, a special selection, once again under the direction of Max Sherrill, the Frontier Regional Band.
Ladies and gentlemen, our guest speaker needs no extensive introduction. Please join me in welcoming home former Deerfield Elementary Principal and the uh, Chairman Ex Officio of the Deerfield Memorial Day Committee, Mr. Douglas Tierney. First, it is nice to be home. Be with you. Well, thanks, John, and I'm, I am deeply honored to be here. It is good morning, and it is a good morning for today's Memorial Day, unlike any other. For almost 150 years, communities, towns, and villages, much like Deerfield, have gathered to honor, to pause, in respect, and to remember those men and women who gave their last full measure, indeed made the supreme sacrifice, to preserve the dreams, the values, the freedoms we enjoy in our country today. Dotted throughout the town are two dozen blue signs affixed uh, on top of the regular street signs of those men who died while in service, while in military service to this country. And soon will be read the 24 names of Deerfield residents who were killed in action while defending freedom. The countries where they died include England, France, Belgium, Holland, Germany, Italy, the Philippines, Vietnam, and Iraq. All places which stole the youth and the dreams of these men. On Memorial Day, the graves of fallen heroes are reverently adorned with flowers selected by family and friends. And in addition, and most appropriate, this past week, over 900 flags, fresh flags, were placed in grave markers of fallen heroes throughout the town. Now, this was a collaborative effort led by the members of the VFW Post 3295, members of the Deerfield High School alumni, 19 National Honor Society student volunteers from Frontier, and members of the Memorial Committee. The flags seem to serve as sentinels, protecting those who in prior years protected our way of life. In my life, three people have been instrumental in helping me build a deepening, more meaningful understanding on the significance and importance of Memorial Day. The first would be my would be Charlie Sadowski, my father-in-law, a World War II Merchant Marine veteran who insisted all family members attend Deerfield's memorial ceremonies. He would rise early in the morning and have his daughters meticulously attend to his uniform. Decked out in his newly expanded Navy uniform, <laughs> he proudly sang for the country he loves so much. And many of you fondly recall Charlie's tenor edition of God Bless America, which Lisa Woods will sing later in our program. One Memorial Day observance stands out for me, and I will never forget the year a decision was made to shorten the parade route and simply march from Frontier to the South Deerfield Common and end there. No visit to the town cemeteries and the veterans' graves. This did not sit well with Charlie. As the program ended, he said in words that still ring in my head, to hell with them. I'm going to the cemeteries to show my respect to my fellow veterans. So undaunted and taking full advantage of the confusion on the common, Charlie proceeded to begin marching down South Main Street, seemingly creating his own parade. He was quickly joined by a troop of Deerfield Boy Scouts who were carrying flags on poles. And to my utter amazement, everyone joined in, and they too marched down South Main Street and onto the cemeteries. You see, for Charlie, 
This was a personal matter. And I was forever changed. 16 years ago, on, night, on Thursday, May 24, 2001, a young Betty Collinsworth planned and orchestrated a program entitled Operation Recognition. This is a program uh, as part of a national effort to have local high schools award diplomas, some posthumously, to students or their relatives who left high school to serve our country during World War II rather than complete their education. The program was inspiring. Hosted in the new Frontier Auditorium, and I can see myself sitting three rows of back from where the band is now. The program was unbelievable. It really was a christening moment for this space, this hallowed space. The program was well researched, it was breathtaking, and it was emotional for recipients, their families, and all in attendance. Especially memorable for me was the impact the program had on numerous frontier students who participated by either presenting background information about the recipients or by performing beautiful music for the program. For them, it was a first-person connection into history, far more meaningful and personal than any textbook could ever hope to accomplish. And many would move to tears, and so was I. For 15 years, Benny's inspiration, counsel, suggestions, and determination have been invaluable to this program and the catalyst to completing the 24 Blue KIA signs in honoring Deerfield's fallen heroes. Now, whether working on the USO, honoring fallen heroes, or assisting veterans, Betty always was quick to say to me, Doug, I don't mind the work. This is personal. I continue to hear her voice, and I have been forever change. A few minutes ago, we rose at the playing of our national anthem by the Frontier Regional Band. Some stood at full attention, while others saluted, and many covered their hearts out of respect. Since August 27, 2003, I have placed my hand over my heart when the national anthem is played for a special reason. I see clearly the face of a former elementary school student, a friend to my nephews and my sons, U.S. Army Sergeant Gregory A. Belanger, a young man so full of life and laughter, and yet he was killed in action in Iraq. To be clear, I do not place Gregory's death above the thousands of others who have also made the supreme sacrifice. Rather, it's through him I have secured a deeper understanding of Charlie and Betty's drive to honor, respect, and to remember the people they grew up with and who have died while in service to their country. And I have been forever changed. I ask you, on this day, who do you remember? Who do you see? What memories and stories need to be passed on to our children and our grandchildren? What family or friend or neighborhood stories seem so important on this, a day unlike any other? that they must be shared, lest they be lost forever. As a young boy growing up in Waltham, Massachusetts, my dad and I would go to ceremonies much like we have today. I would often see veterans donned in uniform caps, standing at attention with faces so solemn. I wondered then, why are they so serious? and in full salute. What 
were they thinking? Thanks to Charlie, Betty, and Greg, I can now answer that question. I understand the significance of today's observance. I now look at the veterans who march and who are with us today, who have proudly served in our military, and I am awed by their sense of duty to those they served with and to those that did not return home. The veterans I have had the pleasure to know and to work with have told me repeatedly, Doug, look, we're the lucky ones. We came back home. Look into their faces. Mirror the respect and pride they model today. Hear their stories, much like Kathy's. And thank them for their service to our country to those who have served in our military and to the families impacted by the ravages of war. Your presence here adds to the power and the dignity of this program. You provide us with an opportunity to say thank you for your sacrifice and your service to this country. Let me also add that 2017 is the 50th anniversary of the big buildup in the conflict in Vietnam. This conflict was extremely divisive and, as was noted last night in the National Memorial, and no one ever wanted to talk about it. To our Vietnam veterans who are out there, a special thank you to you for your service and your sacrifice and a heartfelt, long overdue, warm, welcome home. In the studio gallery in Texas, not far from Fort Hood, hang portraits drawn by, from photographs of military personnel who were killed in action. When asked why the artist painted the pictures, his response captures why we have gathered here today. He said, their lives still make a difference as long as we don't forget, as long as we remember. In closing, I share with you something that was said during the Memorial Day program by former President Ronald Reagan. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in their bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on to them to do the same or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children, our children's children, what it was once like in the United States where men and women are free. May God bless these United States, and may he bless those who have served or are currently serving our military. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. In December 2016, our committee lost a very dear and important member, Betty Hollingsworth. As Doug mentioned earlier, Betty was involved with many community affairs, especially regarding veterans, including the Deerfield Veteran Street Sign Project, which she chaired in 2012. She wrote military biographies for each dedication ceremony for all 24 known KIAs in town of Deerfield, in the town of Deerfield. Commemorative signs were placed in proximity to the residences of the veterans. And as a quick aside, we thank the Frontier Regional Baseball team as they accompanied me this week to decorate those signs. Thank them. On this day of remembrance, we remember Betty in a special way as the names of our veterans who made the ultimate sacrifice are read by U.S. Navy Radar Man Second Class Roger Gaucher and David White of the Memorial Day Committee. David Rock.
Good morning. Second Lieutenant Thomas W. Ashley, U.S. Marine Corps. Sergeant Gregory Belanger, U.S. Army. Seaman Second Class John W. Gronkart, U.S. Navy. Private First Class Walter J. Krasowski, U.S. Marine Corps. Private James F. Campbell, U.S. Army. Private First Class James A. Childs, U.S. Army. Private Charles M. Clapp, U.S. Army. Private Raymond T. Clapp, U.S. Army. Sergeant Stephen G. Everett, U.S. Army Air Corps. Private Stanford I. Gable, U.S. Army. Private First Class Ronald Gibro, U.S. Army. Sergeant Archie C. Hale, U.S. Army. First Lieutenant Alan J. Johnson, United States Army Air Corps. Second Lieutenant Thomas W. Johnson, United States Army Air Corps. Sergeant Benjamin B. Archikaitis, U.S. United States Army. Seaman, Second Class, William Carl Muller, United States Navy. First Sergeant Frank P. Namieski, United States Army. Private First Class, William S. Peavy, United States Army. Sergeant Richard A. Scott, United States Army. Sergeant, Staff Sergeant Joseph A. Sokolowski, United States Army. BFC Stanley W. Totsik, United States Army. Captain John Kenneth Warder, United States Air Force. Staff Sergeant Woodrow W. White, United States Army. Staff Sergeant Charles J. Ustramski. Thank you. We'll please pause for a moment of silence. Deerfield Elementary School, sixth grader Ethan Bryan for a recitation of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met in a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who have here gave their lives that that nation might hear and might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here, have consecrated it far above our poor power to add and detract. The world will little know, nor long remember what we say here. But can never be forgot what they did here. It is all to a living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which those who have fought here have thus so far nobly advanced.
advance. Therefore, we must honor that we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave us that full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth.
grip. And then Douglas sack. Thank you very much. Miss Lisa Woods will now sing God Bless America.
Thank you. Please be seated. We now invite Father Randolph Calvo for the final blessing. Let us pray. We come together today in solemn remembrance of those whom our nation has asked to make the supreme sacrifice of their lives in order to defend us and our ideals. Here in Massachusetts alone, it is estimated that over 37,000 citizens have been killed in battle from the time of the Revolutionary War to this very day. This is also 37,000 families who have had to mourn the death of a loved one and communities such as ours that have had their own die on faraway lands. On Memorial Day, we stop everything else and we remember. We cannot bring them back, but we can promise to never, ever forget. And we can also make every effort to assure mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, grandparents and friends, that when the United States of America does send its sons and daughters into harm's way, that every other avenue of engagement has been tried and tried and tried again. Several years ago, our current Secretary of Defense told Congress, if you don't fully fund the State Department, then I have to buy more ammunition. The ones who have been to war know that war has to be the last resort so that when we do have to enter into the fight, then the sacrifices that have to be made, even the supreme sacrifices offered, that they are worth it. May those who have served and those who have died in battle, may they find peace in their next life that they did not know in this one. And may they, they know that we will never forget nor ever take for granted what they have done for us. May God keep them and all of us and the United States of America in his care. Amen. Thank you, Father Randy. This concludes today's program. I'd like to personally thank, and on behalf of the Memorial Day Committee, thank everyone who participated for your attendance here today, those that prepared for this program. We will have refreshments served for everyone, help yourselves in the cafeteria. And in closing, um, I'd just like to wish all of you and your families a very safe, enjoyable holiday weekend. God bless America, and God bless our troops. Thank you.